Well, hello and welcome back to Bible Bites. Today I'm going to be continuing uh, kind of a mini series that I'm doing each week on a fruit of the Spirit. So last week we did love, and that was probably the longest Bible bite I've ever done. And I don't even feel like I could even touch 1% of what the Bible says about love. Well, today we're going to be looking at another one that the Bible says a lot about, and that is joy. So we did love, joy, and the fruit of the Spirit, if you don't know, are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And so joy is uh, probably one of the most important fruit of the Spirit because it, it determines so much of our reality of how we live day to day. And, and the other ones are baked into this as well. We really can't have joy unless we have love. So um, I hope you're excited for today's Bible Bite. I'm excited. Uh, I've been excited looking through this and looking at what the scripture has to say about this. So let's get to it. All right, so like I said in the intro today, we're talking all about joy, which is the second fruit of the Spirit. So I wanna look at two passages in the Bible that kind of talk about joy that I think are really important for us understanding uh, uh, how to get joy and, and where it comes from and what it leads to as well. So the first one is gonna be in Romans chapter 15, verse 13. It says, "'May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound in hope.'" So I want to break this one down before I read the second passage because it, it, it sees it, it it shows us what leads to joy and what joy leads to. And if you're listening carefully, uh, you'll probably already guess that this is kind of a, a cyclical thing that's going on. So it says the God of hope is going to fill us uh, with joy and peace. So God of hope, uh, hope is what's leading to joy. And what's the outcome of that? So that by the power of the Holy Spirit, we may abound in hope. So hope is leading to joy, and then joy is leading to hope. And what is that hope? Well, that's that's hope in the, in, in the promise of eternal life with Jesus. It's hope in the promise that uh, God loves us, and then he has a plan for us here and now. Um, there's, there's so much that the Bible says about hope, uh, but that's not really what this Bible is talking about. We're talking about joy, but I think it's important to know that they're intrinsically linked with each other. So if you're feeling like you don't have joy in your life, you're probably not feeling like you have hope. And if you are feeling like you have joy, uh, you probably have hope as well. So th they go hand in hand. They're inseparable ideas uh, as far as what scripture says about them. And so if you're, if you're sitting here watching this Bible Bible and you're wondering, well, how do I get joy? We also see that in scripture and we actually see it from Jesus's mouth uh, himself. He tells us in John 15, so we were reading in Romans 15, now we're going to read in John 15, and it's John 15, and, and there's so much in this passage that's really, really good and important. I actually did my very first Bible by ever on this channel um, on John 14 and 15 and kind of the, some of the concepts in there, but I'm just going to read verse 10 and 11. So John 15, 10 through 11. It says, if you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have... I have as just as I have kept my father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be full. All right, so, so there we see something really important. Keeping God's commandments uh, is going to be how we abide with Christ. So abiding with Christ is going to be what leads to joy. So the joy of Christ, he, he wants it to be in us so that our joy may be full. And you could also say that our hope may be full as well because we see that those two are linked. And uh, it, we, we get this by abiding in Christ and we abide in Christ uh, by keeping his commandments. So if we keep in the commandments, we will abide in his love just as Christ has kept the Father's commandments and abides in his love. Okay, so that's that's the starting point for joy. And, and I can pinpoint this in my own life of times when I'm not feeling hopeful, I'm not feeling the joy of the Lord. Uh, it's the same times where I'm not walking in the spirit, where I'm not following Christ. Maybe I'm living in a sin issue or I, I know there's an area that God is calling me deeper into a relationship with him and I'm not wanting to do that. Uh, whatever it is that is separating uh, me from, from where God's wanting me to be, 
that is that is the root thing of what's not causing me hope and joy. And so the steps that I have to take is, well, one, I just need to check and make sure Christ is on the throne. And so I've talked about that in some other Bible Bites and some of my coworkers have as well, but this idea of throne checks. Who is on the throne right now? Who's calling the shots? Who's the one that is really Lord right now here in this moment? If you're not feeling joy and you're not feeling hope, that's the first thing you should check is who is on the throne. And if Christ is on the throne, then look, well, what are, what are the commandments of Christ that I need to be following if he's really on the throne? And so look around you. Are you loving your neighbor well? Are you loving God with all your heart, soul, strength, and mind? Are you, are you seeking out his will for your life in the Great Commission? And if you're doing all those things, you're going to have joy. It says if we're keeping his commandments, if we're abiding with Christ, we are going to have joy and, and, and f- be full of joy. He says that your joy may be full. So there's more that the Bible says uh, about the concept of joy. It's, it says uh, the joy of the Lord will be our strength. So we get strength from the joy that we have. Um, but I think that the real important concept is to understand how do we get that joy when we're not living that in the moment. So we need to surrender ourselves back to Christ. Um, It's not that we're losing our salvation or anything like that, but there's still a day-to-day process of us needing to to basically put Christ on that throne and say, Jesus, once again today, I'm putting you as Lord of my life. And that's just recommitting to him, uh, following those commandments, loving your neighbor, loving those around you. So that first fruit of the Spirit, love, will also lead to the second fruit of the Spirit, which is joy. So I hope this encouraged you. I hope you're enjoying this uh, Bible Bite series that's going through the fruit of the Spirit. I know it's very encouraging for me to get a week to focus on each one of these and really say, man, am I really focused on loving people this week? Am I really focused on joy this week and and, and finding my joy in the Lord? And so if you haven't already, uh, subscribe to our channel, like this video, comment down below um, if you're enjoying this series or enjoying these Bible Bites. And uh, thank you for watching, and we'll catch you guys on tomorrow's Bible Bite.